Welcome back everybody. This is Eric here with Iraq Veteran 8888. Today we've got a video. It's going to be a lot of fun. We're going to be shooting a SIG P365 pistol today. We're going to shoot 500 rounds through it. We're going to see how well it holds up for the first 500 rounds. Guys, there's been a lot of controversy and butt hurt floating around about this particular pistol. And uh, look, some of it's merited, right? There's been some issues with some of the early P, uh, P365s. This is a later gun. This is not one of the earlier guns that were having problems. I know some people were having some issues with customer service and with getting their guns back in a timely manner. We've heard all the horror stories. Uh, I'm sure you saw Tim from Military Arms Channel posting photos on Instagram of you know his magazines getting scratched up in the back. Uh, we did identify that this particular pistol did have the leg of the spring that was poking out a pretty good ways and it was beginning to scratch the magazines. We went ahead and we trimmed the spring down preemptively just because we knew it was going to be a problem. But in terms of the serial number on this gun and what I've been told, this is supposed to be a later 365. We're going to give it a fair shake and see how well the gun runs. Now this is not intended to be a meltdown, but we do have additional magazines here. We're going to shoot six magazine strings we're going to stop, let the gun cool down, load six more mags, get a different shooter until we've gone through 500 rounds. We're going to run some Aguila 124 grain ammunition, uh, just ball ammunition, and we're going to see how well the gun fares. All right, so pros and cons. What, what's to like about the gun? Well, for one, it's slim and compact. It's got night sights right out of the box, forward cocking serrations. It's got a nice slim profile. It's a double stack, holds 12 rounds with the big base plate on the bottom. So what's not to like? A 12 shot 9 millimeter that pit for pat is about the same size if not smaller than the Smith & Wesson shield which is a single stack. Now this is my Robar shield. I really love this gun and this is my primary carry gun uh, every day is this shield right here. And my wife wanted a 9 millimeter carry pistol that was small, light, compact, and we kind of got looking at the P365 as being an option. So before I give this to my wife to carry, we want to make sure it's going to hold up well. Um, there's been some issues with firing pins, I think breaking on them, uh, various broken parts, uh, not to mention the issue with the spring dragging on the back of the magazine. So we want to give the gun a fair shake. Before I give it to my wife to carry, I obviously want to make sure that this gun works 110%. The last thing I want is for a firearm to fail when my wife needs it, right? So it's important that we test this gun. So without further ado, these are the first shots. We have never fired this gun. These are the first shots right out of the box. All I did was uh, take a boar snake and we rotted out the barrel to get any oil or preservatives out of the barrel and we lubricated it. Otherwise, these are the, you're, you're learning along with me, these are the first shots that this pistol has ever taken in my possession. Without further ado, we're gonna go for it. I did get some extra magazines which by the way, were like over $40 a piece. So the magazines are not inexpensive by any stretch. It comes with a 10 shot with a little flush base plate. You've got a 10 shot with a pinky extension, but it's still a 10 shot. And then you've got a 12 shot factory mag that gives you much more real estate on the bottom of the gun to hold on to. So depending on your particular arrangement, depending on you know how concealable you want it to be, you have options there. Very cool. I'm going to take my time and sort of go for a little bit of accuracy, have a little fun, and just see how it goes. First, we're going to go with the tiny base plate. Ooh, <laughs> it's, it's, it's tiny. All right, first shots out of the 365. I have not fired this gun. You guys are learning along with me. All right, here we go. Got a casualty over there, the little bit of jacket splash. Tell you what, let's go ahead and put him out of his misery. Okay, 10 shot mag with the finger extension. I can tell you right now, I like that a little bit better. Gives me a little bit more to hold on to. So far, accuracy is not terrible. All right, we're in it for the long haul, boys and girls. Hold on.
It is a snappy little gun. It's got some recoil. And remember, we're gonna let this gun cool down a bit in between uh, strings. The point is not to do a meltdown, you know, although that would be fun, wouldn't it? We're trying to give the gun a fair shake. All right, I'm just gonna uh, proceed to group the rest of these rounds on this plate over here. Not bad, it is a little snappy, but for a defensive unit, trigger's a little spongy, the reset's a little spongy, but it's got a nice clean break on the trigger. The sights are excellent on this pistol. Well, I'm not grouping terribly good, but for my first time, not terrible. It is a snappy little gun. You're probably going to hear me say that about a bazillion times in this video. All right. You have to hold on to this gun, okay? I can certainly see, uh, you know, for a person of smaller stature, um, you know, it is a small gun, but, you know, the thing is, there's no such thing as a free lunch in physics, guys, okay? You know, it, it's small, it's handy, it's compact, but you lose a little bit in terms of controllability and everything like that. Um, as a defensive unit, I mean, we are shooting 15 yards, uh, probably outside of an in-close defensive situation. Um, I'm probably pulling a few of those shots, but it's stacking the rounds right in there. Uh, I would have no problem feeling uh, adequately armed with this pistol. Okay. Now, do you want me to go ahead and shoot more that you guys are loading, or do you want me to just be the last mag? I will. You want me to keep shooting? Yeah. I'll keep shooting. All right, the gun's pretty hot right now, but not overly hot. I'm going to put a couple of rounds on these short plates uh, here that are up close. We saw the poppers came uh, down really well. Those last several rounds stacked into like a silver dollar. I mean, one thing that I that I can definitely say out the gate that I do like about the gun, definitely the sights are great. The sights pick up really nice, and these are night sights. So the price of these particular guns is in line with what you expect to pay for a standard Glock. Uh, I think these are about five, five fifty. So. Definitely higher price for a compact unit, but at least they give you some usable night sights. And uh, I do like the forward cocking serrations. Okay, so we are getting some of that primer swipe. So is this something that Tim was reporting early on? Now, what, what would be the consequence there? Reliability being an issue or? Undue stress on the striker firing pin. Okay, so is that what people are reporting of their breaking strikers? So we are getting the primer swipe that was being reported. And we had the scratching on the magazine that was 
reported. Well, we, we prevented that by trimming the, the spring, correct? Okay. Correct. But reliability wise, so far it seems to be working. All right, flat base mag. I'm gonna shoot these and I'm gonna turn it over to uh, Chad. Let him have a go on this. I know uh, he's Mr. Glock 43. So we'll see what he thinks of this. I am very pleased with the accuracy. Very pleased. I think for a, for a carry unit, Chad, I, I, it doesn't really need to do any more than that. So the accuracy's there. You know, I'm not like a, I'm not some sort of expert pistol marksman or anything like that. Uh, but thing is, if my life depended on it and I had to pull this gun out and use it in that capacity at that range, I would feel uh, perfectly within my, you know, uh, ability to be able to make the shot. All right, we're going to keep shooting here. Those sodas back there are lurking at me. They're lurking around looking at me. The English language is so odd, isn't it? All right, let's see. Look at that thing. <laughs> well, I'm shooting it, but I guess it's just going right through it. Well, it's got soda in it. Oh, okay, yeah, that's why it drained it. <laughs> okay, all right. I'm hitting those watermelons. They're just not moving because this ball is just zipping right through it. You're a little low. You know, um, another observation, the texture of the frame is nice. It's not overly bearing. Uh, the magazine release is in a comfortable spot. It's slim. So far it appears to work. That's uh, a good thing. All right, let's stretch out a little bit more distance. All right, now this might be an exercise in futility, but I'm gonna try to shoot some targets about 40 yards away with it. Okay, tell you what, just for fun, we're testing reliability, but let's, uh, let's try some shots out to 75 yards with this little devil, just for fun. I can't even hear it hitting. Am I connecting at all? You looks like it. Okay. Very cool. All right, last mag, and then we're gonna turn it over to Chad for a couple of shots here. She's getting warm. I think we're gonna probably wanna let her cool off. But you know, despite 
the amount of rounds that we're putting through this gun, it's actually not, not that hot quite like you would think it would be. Kind of surprised. I figured it'd be too hot to hold by now, but it really isn't. Not terrible. We're gonna let it lie just like this, let it cool down just a second, get Chad over here on the gun. We're gonna keep shooting our 500 round test. So far, so good, we'll see. All right guys, I'm gonna take a few shots with the P365 here. And like Eric said, there's been a lot of craziness going on, on the interwebs with this gun. And uh, we're seeing some of the problems that were mentioned early on. This is technically a generation three gun with some of the improvements that they made from what we understand. Um, I'm just gonna run 12 magazines through here and we're gonna you know, get closer to getting 500 rounds down the pipe and really see what happens. Uh, we did film a, a small um, or short slow motion segment at 960 frames per second with the uh, Sony over here. Uh, just seeing the ejection process and everything, trying to figure out why the brass is, uh, you know, why the firing pin is dragging on the primer and then why the brass is also having these kind of streaks show up on it, almost like you drug a, a file or a piece of sandpaper against it. It's very odd. It's not something I've ever seen on a, on a semi-automatic handgun of any type. Usually the brass comes out looking quite clean on the backside. I mean, even Glocks, you know, the striker indentation is literally just the primer flowing into that square pocket uh, on the slide itself. But very odd, very odd. Not something that I really want to see. Uh, just me personally, it seems like over time uh, you would run into that same firing pin uh, kind of work hardening issue and snapping that firing pin off over time just with that extra stress that's put on it. I don't know if maybe they beefed up the firing pin design or whatever the case is and that's not a problem anymore. It still just doesn't look good. Not in my opinion anyways. And take that for what you will. I think we're in agreement there, man. I think so. And uh, guys too, Eric forgot to mention it, but if you want to support the channel directly and help us do stuff like this and pick up this ammunition, if you go over to the website and pick up some of the t-shirts that we offer, uh, our good buddy Matt actually makes those for us locally here. He's a great dude and the shirts are awesome and it's a very direct way to support us here on the channel in addition to purchasing man cans and also the Patreon support. Uh, if you guys want to, if not, that's okay too. And Matt's here with us today. He's going to be shooting. And Matt's hanging out and he's going to shoot some rounds with this thing too. And we're all going to have a little piece of the pie. The SIG pie, boy. All right. Never fired this gun before. Hey, don't laugh though. It, it, it is very comfortable to shoot. I really, look, I'll be honest with you. When we were at NRA earlier this year, Tim Harmson had one of these. He had just picked it up on the way down to Dallas. And we were handling it stuff. And I'm like, man, I really, really like this. And then Tim's first video, you know, he shot quite a bit of ammunition through it. And that last magazine, it failed. And then after that, it was just issue after issue. Well, let's see if we can replicate it, man. man. I, I really want to like this gun because it is, it is a handful. That's 12 rounds. I mean, that is awesome in such a small compact gun. Go for I'm, it, man. I'll take some shots over here. Uh, this is 18 or so yards away, and we're going to see. Uh oh, that was definitely me. Definitely does have a little snap to it, but it's very, very manageable. Man, all right. All right, so far, so good. That's the other 12 round mag. So I'm starting with the comfortable mags and I'm gradually gonna move to the not so comfortable mag. But more concealable. But more concealable. I don't know, that thing's pretty concealable as it sits. I mean, right now, this, compared to like my Glock 43 with the Hive extension on there, yeah. And you get three more rounds. Three more rounds, man. All right, so I'm hitting just slightly to the left. I'm gonna aim up here for that bolt and try to take my time and stack them in and then we're just gonna run through. Exceptional accuracy. I mean, just for kind of wrapping them out of there. All right, so that was, keep those mags you load right there. That way we can keep up with them. 
because you know we can't count here we okay hey, me too remember those revolver videos yeah 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 you're right matt told me y'all didn't learn how to count past five in the military but uh -oh. just shoot the dang gun <laughs> Shut your pie hole and shoot. I'm All right. Send the YouTube police on you. <laughs> All right, I'm going to take out your leftover watermelon rings. Right over the top. Get out of here. <laughs> All right. Slightly less comfortable, but slightly more concealable magazine. And back to a 12-round mag. I don't think you could ask for better than that in terms of a defensive unit. I dig it. I know. I really the do. The sights are nice. All right. Ooh, it's a pinky grip. All right. Let go fair. Him and his voices. Never understood. Uh oh, get out of here. Now, have to aim just off the left side of him. The gun is hitting slightly to the left for me. Yeah, I think it, it was favoring to the left for me just to scotch too. Yeah, the sights are pushed just a teensy bit further to the right than they really need to be. They're not exactly a mechanical center. I'm back here loading mags, guys, while Chad's uh, thinking here. Um, I will note that that last uh, round is a major bear to get into the magazine. It is. On the that 12th round, I noticed that too. Very, very difficult to get that sucker in there. But yep. once it's there, it's there. Yep. It ain't coming out <laughs> unless you shoot it. All right, let me try some longer range shots here. It's not exactly a precision pistol. I mean, God, the barrel on this thing's what, three inches? If that. And yeah. there is no safety. Yeah, And no there safety. is no magazine disconnect safety either, guys, so it will fire without the magazine. <laughs> All right, little six inch popper. He's about 30 yards away. You got him. And I missed him. You got it. Oh, just you can't ask for better than that, man, for a defensive unit. Thing shoots very, very well. It does. Very, very nice. All right, uh, I think uh, it's these four, and that's the rest of my... Uh, Your 12 mag 12 string mags. will be completed, correct. Okay. I mean, so far, I, I really love the ergonomics of the grip. It's very comfortable in the hand. It's not tearing my hand up. It's a little snappy, but, I mean, it's very, very manageable. I mean, the muzzle flip isn't crazy. It's got a nice kind of low bore axis compared to something like the shield. And the shield does kind of sit a little bit high. Some of the SIG offerings sit a little high and they've got much more muzzle flip and all. Um, I, I really do like it. And I really hope to see this thing actually get through this without any problems. So far, so good. But we still got a ways to go. Get out of here. Trying to take out those watermelons. All right, so those are Matt's mags. Correct. Okay. Try some little headshots up here up close just for fun. I mean, the trigger is, you know, dry firing it, the trigger's a little bit, it's kind of spongy feeling. It does have a nice clean brake though. The brake is clean, the over travel is non-existent. I mean, it, it's really not bad. It's, it's a little springy feeling, kind of like, uh, what were those Rugers, the LC9s? The early LC9s, they had that kind of springy, kind of spongy feeling. Very trigger. similar. 
best way I can describe it. All right, so. Okay, good to go. All right, one more mag. Guys, I'm just wrapping these things out here to move this sucker along. It's working. It's working great. Let's see. Now I couldn't count that time. Well, so far she is working just fine. Let's get the t-shirt man on the gun. Let's get the t-shirt man on the gun and see how he fares. Hey guys, Matt here. I'm gonna put uh, about one, two strings uh, through the new P365. Uh, this is the Gen 3, uh, like you've seen before. We're gonna test the uh, functionality, make sure that uh, they worked out all the bugs. Uh, but I wanna test the accuracy. I know these guys have been out here having some fun, so this is right in my wheelhouse. I'm a micro uh, or a subcompact guy. Uh, I carry a Shield 2.0. Um, you know, I love the no safety feature, so let's roll with it and see. Have fun, man. All right. And I have the magazines here stacked from uh, most least comfortable to the most comfortable. I want to get the, the short ones out of the way. That's right. All right. Wow. Let's uh, not want some mirrors. Yeah, let's do some mirror pro. It's going to get loud. All right. Just have fun, dude. All right. Here we go. Okay. Remember, it was hitting a little low for us. Yeah. Yeah, I'm hitting low. Let's transition here. Yeah, it's pretty low. There we go. All right. All right. So the slide didn't lock to the rear? Yeah, that one didn't lock out. So. Oh, it's, it's, yep. All right, let's go. Nice triangulation there. Those last three shots stacked yeah. into about a probably two inch circle. Yeah, let's see. I got it dialed in now, so let's see what All we right. can do. Yeah, man. There we go. Good. So this is not wanting to hold to the are rear. You, uh, are you maybe riding the, the slide stop down without thinking about it maybe by mistake? Perhaps. Hopefully, let's see if we'll just... Give it a try. Yeah. I know that's That's an why issue we with... get different shooters. Yeah. I know right? that's an issue with the shield as well. If you ride that slide down, it's not going to lock to the rear. Oh, what happened there? All right, so we do have it's out of battery. All right. Where's the round that came uh, out? I just put it back in. You did? Yep. What did it do? Did it not uh, go all the way into battery? Yeah, no, yeah, it just didn't go into battery. Huh, I'll be dang. Yep. And let's give it a try. And that was with me actually just going over the top with it, not riding it home. Okay. Interesting. All right. All right. Yeah. Do we get a... Try again. Well, it looks like the primer got struck on that yeah. No shooting Matt. He's back, boys. <laughs> <laughs> the slide did not lock to the yeah. rear. Again. Yep. All right. Continue the test. Look at that. 
Stop where you're at. Don't move. Don't move. All right. Yeah, it was out of battery. That's yeah. crazy. The slide is just a scotch out of battery. Let's see if it'll go off now. This is the strangest thing. There you go, you're getting in there with it. And the slides are not locked to the rear. Yeah. That is the strangest thing. I tell you what, you pass those mags here, I'll top them off for you. All right. Well, All right, guys, we're getting this dialed in now. We're gonna get some rounds on target. We're going over the top with it. So let's see. What we'll do, Matt, when your string is over, we'll verify. Uh, we'll shoot it also just to verify that maybe that might be something that's happening to you and maybe not us. Okay. Just to be safe. So it didn't lock the slide to the rear yep. every single time you shot it. Yep. That is strange. But you know, sometimes my shield does that as well. Really? Yeah. Wow. That's wow. the strangest that's thing. That's crazy. You're trying to make a deliberate effort to keep your left hand off of that slide stop. Make sure your thumb's not maybe riding up or anything like that. Yeah, I'll do that this time. Uh, my thumbs do tend to ride a little bit higher, so I'll put my thumbs up. So yeah, I'll, I'll see what I can do. No big deal. That All is right. very, very odd. So this is the start of string number two. So this will be the last, uh, last string. Getting down to the about the last of the game. There we go. That so that locked. one, that one yep. locked to the rear. So you just had to make a, a slight change to your grip. Yep. So right, it looks like my thumb and that slide release doesn't top off. agree. Yep. All right. So let's see here. working. It's you like it? It's it's a really, really smooth gun. It's crisp. I think uh, the ergonomics of it is kind of messing with my, my grip a little bit. I'm used to placing my thumbs a little bit higher 
Yeah. Uh, and I'm having to kind of smush my hands down so that I can get the... It is a, it is a snappy little gun yeah. to hold on to, isn't it? Yep, and that slide did not lock to the rear yep. again. You've got those uh, last five mags to finish up there. Okay. And then that'll be uh, that'll conclude your string. All right. We'll have a few more rounds to burn up, and what Chad and I will do is we'll test it with the remaining rounds to make sure that the slide not locking to the rear is right. maybe just an isolated it incident might be with user you error. as a shooter. Yeah, it might be, might be user error. It does happen. I'm not going to say that I'm an expert shooter. Obviously, I'm not. Hey, <laughs> look, it's cool, man. Do your thing. All right. Let's go. There you go. Wow. That's so wild. Yeah. I mean, I've... I've Usually the problem I run into is, is I will accidentally ride a slide stop up and lock the slide to the rear in an unintended time. Mm -hmm. That's usually more of the problem I have. I, I've never really seen very many instances where the slide stop fails to hold up on the last shot. That's, that's right. a very odd Odd it's going to be interesting to see how it reacts with you guys. It didn't seem to be giving you guys any trouble. So okay. again, it might be user error. It might be just where my hands are being placed just on the Just be, you know, your arm. hands versus ours. Exactly. There you go. Yep. Wow. I'll be. I think it's this little stubby one out of the way. <laughs> All right. Oof. user error or maybe it just doesn't want to work right all right go for yes. it man guys this i know this is kind of a long video but i hope y'all see we're trying to be methodical here The ejection does look fairly consistent. Yeah, I'm watching it eject, uh, Chad, and it looks pretty good. All right, last mag. So it looks like it might be user error on my part. Possibly. Uh, on that particular uh, iteration, I kept my thumbs much farther down than I normally did, and the slide did lock back to So you're to probably the rear. riding the slide stop down. Yeah. Okay. That's so all right. Let's try it again. I'll make a, a, a Deliberate. I don't know if that's a deal breaker for me because if I have to modify my natural, uh, the natural way that I plan on pointing uh, and shooting, then that might just not be something that is good for me. Just cut them off. You don't need those thumbs anyway. <laughs> <laughs> no kidding. The only thing that makes us humans, right? Our uh, man, is that posable thumb. That's right. All right. There you go. There you go. There we You're go. Get the hang so, of it now, ain't you? Yeah, <laughs> so guys, just to be clear, user error. Modified my modified my grip. Slide works as intended. I don't want you to put any undue hatred towards a firearm that doesn't deserve it. Uh, it was on me. 
but overall, um, you know, very, very snappy, as you guys would say. Um, some of those rounds felt like they were coming out extremely hot, so it was a little it was kind of, they'd come out of that barrel just screaming, and you could feel it, uh, that very, very small firearm. Um, it was pretty accurate um, for what it is, being a very, very small gun. Um, as long as if you can shoot it and you have the capability to hit it, it'll hit it. We're going to have Chad uh, expend all the remaining rounds here. Awesome. Let's do it. <laughs> all right, guys, like Eric said, this is kind of the reason why we have multiple shooters fire a firearm of, uh, in, in these videos is to get different perspectives. And also, you see that every, every one of us has a different grip you know, on a subcompact or like a, a single stack, you know, real highly concealable handgun. Um, you can see those issues like Matt was having. I've had them before with like the Glock 43. I had them with the shield early on. And all it takes is just changing that grip just slightly to alleviate that problem. And, you know, the, the parts or the, the slide release and, and such, it's not really overly obtrusive out of the side of the firearm itself. It's very low profile, but sometimes it's just an issue with your particular grip. Um, we did determine that that is probably what was going on. I am going to fire these last uh, mags here. I've got a little bit of extra ammo here. I'm going to load the mags and I'm going to show you just how difficult it is to load this 12 round mag. It's definitely a bear, but they do work. And that's 12 rounds in your hand. 12 rounds. The remainder of our 500 rounds is right there in front of you. Yep. So and that'll be 500 rounds. After this, we're going to, this video is getting a little bit long. We're going to inspect this gun uh, in a future video, pull it apart, uh, just check all the components for wear and such as that. We're going to run another 500 rounds through it, this time with some defensive ammo mixed in, uh, various types, just to see how it feeds various hollow points and such as that, and then run some more ball through it and see what it does after a thousand rounds. I mean, at that point, I'd say if everything looks good, there doesn't appear to be any undue wear on the components. I think we're solid. I really, really do like this gun. I, do I want too. that. I want that out there. I love the way this thing shoots and handles and everything about it. I think I it's mean, a great defensive unit, man. Man, I like my Glock 43 now, but whew, I don't know. All right. I gotta get my feel back now. My feelsies. Well, Eric told me to wrap him out of here. I don't know if I'll hit anything, but. <laughs> oh, I, was, I can never do those double taps like that. That's a snappy little gun to, to pull off those double taps with. It's impossible. Now that performance center shield of Eric's, you know, if this gun was ported, woo, that porting makes all the difference as far as controllability like that goes. That green front sight is extremely easy to pick up. I mean, these are night sights right out of the factory. I do like that. That high vis green is, is very, very nice to pick up. Getting some unburnt powder out of the barrel. I got your last ammo right here. Okay. Good. Hey, don't load that 12th round. I want to load that 12th round over here. Okay. Yeah. All right, let's see. Working. <laughs> You're waiting on me, I guess. I am. I'm loading as fast as I can. All right, so 11 rounds in here. This is number 12. Ugh. It's a little bit of a bear. That actually wasn't so bad as it was early. I think they're getting broken in a little bit. Agreed. That 12th round is definitely a little bit of a bear to get in there. All right. I haven't shot 75 yards yet. I'll shoot 75. It was shooting about maybe a foot low for me. Okay. There you go. Let's see. Yep. It's shooting like 10 inches low. I'm aiming at the top of the plate. Yep. Uh, where'd it go? Here we go. 
Oh, pff, now I'm going right over the top of it. There we go. <laughs> that little devil will get out of there. I mean, so far, guys, she's running. She's running. That, uh, you know, that striker dragging issue and all, it, it is strange, but, you know, if it doesn't cause any sort of problems, then does it really matter? I mean, at this point, if SIG has gone back and made the improvements, you know, that they talked about to this particular handgun, and we're seeing no problems yet, uh, but like I said, we'll run another 500 round string next time with some defensive ammo, as I mentioned, but man, so far, this little devil is, is kicking it. What do you think? I, I dig it. I think it's a cool gun. I think it's, it's perfectly accurate enough for a defensive unit. Absolutely. Um, I like it. And I guess I'll say it like this, guys. I want to like it. You know what I mean? Yep. So the thing, the thing is, I want to like it, but if, I mean, my wife's going to be carrying this gun. How do I know that round 501 is not going to be a broken firing pin like Tim had? Yep. That's my issue. All we can do is just, uh, you know, strip it down and we'll, uh, we'll get some footage of that and everything and just inspect all the components, report back in the next video. And uh, stay tuned, we'll, uh, we'll keep running it and see what happens. Uh, Matt did have that one strange uh, incident where the slide did not go fully into battery. And, you know, this thing is not a slouch. I mean, it's... You gotta hold on to it. So, the, the common test of like uh, any striker fired gun, if you squeeze the trigger and then pull the slide to the rear and then gingerly release it, if it does not go fully into battery, then your recoil spring assembly is too weak. You need a stronger recoil spring assembly. Um, typically, that's the case. It, it could just be, uh, it could be an indicator that you might have some problems feeding certain types of ammunition, such as that. I mean, this thing has plenty of power. And as you saw earlier, I mean, no undue issues with feeding, extraction. The ejection is quite robust and consistent. Um, you know, it's getting that brass out of there. Sometimes people don't like the way Glocks extract, but they are very reliable guns, but they literally just poop that brass out of there. I like a gun to get that brass out of here. But uh, stay tuned, guys. I mean, we'll revisit this, and uh, you saw today what we saw. We brought this gun out here, pulled it out of the box. Eric swabbed it out with the Otis kit here, and we went to work. And, um, you know, we can't, we can't lie about it. <laughs> I mean, this, it is what it is, you know? So, it is what it is, guys. Stay tuned, guys. And as I mentioned earlier, if you guys want to support what we're doing here on the channel, go over to the t-shirt shop there, pick up a t-shirt if you want to support us on Patreon or pick up a man can, that would be greatly appreciated. You guys really do keep us going here on the channel and uh, you know all the funds we put right back into the videos and the content that you guys watch for free. So we definitely appreciate you guys very, very much. And stay tuned. Until next time, more on the way.